So we have a problem. Here we are uh, in the 21st century and still around 40% of the world's population is malnourished uh, and around 30% uh, of the world's population uh, is uh, undernourished either in open flagrant hunger, nearly a billion people, or another billion in addition to those also suffering from hidden hunger of micronutrient deficiencies. Farm systems everywhere are already under stress, unable to provide the healthy diets and nutrition in an economical way to meet the needs of the world's population. But there are some big challenges ahead that are going to make all of these problems even tougher than they are now. The most direct of these challenges is the fact that uh, the world's population continues to grow and continues to grow relatively rapidly, even if not in percentage terms, in absolute terms. Every year, another 75 to 80 million people added to the world population. By 2025, uh, we'll reach 8 billion people. By the early 2040s, 9 billion people. And on the current medium forecast of the United Nations we've seen, almost 11 billion people by 2100. At the same time that we'll be grappling with the challenge of feeding uh, more and more people, uh, the current food supply, which is already putting so much stress on the world's environment, uh, is also going to be stressed by another couple of uh, features. One is that for those parts of the world getting richer, the tendency, and we, we hope that it's a, a large part of the world, I, I should uh, quickly emphasize, the tendency will be to add more meat to the diet, even too much meat, uh, too much meat for, uh, for human health and well-being. But as meat is added to the diet, that is a kind of amplifier of the demand for grain production because for animals like cows and pigs, uh, which uh, give us our beef and pork, for every kilogram of uh, beef uh, that we consume, there have been around 10, and in some farm systems, up to 15 kilograms of feed grain consumed by the cow to produce the one kilogram of beef. So there's a huge amplifier as diets shift to meat in terms of the underlying demand for feed grains uh, on the planet and therefore for the total uh, demand on the agricultural system. There's a second major reason, however, uh, in addition uh, to uh, that stress, and that is environmental change is going to make it harder and harder to grow food in many places in the world. So much so that we can't really know in detail, but we have major cause for worry. I'd like to discuss those environmental challenges to uh, the food supply, to the prospects for the increased food production that will be needed to feed a growing world population. These environmental threats, the risks, come in many shapes and forms. Uh, start with climate change, the biggest of all. Uh, as the climate change is under the force of uh, human emissions of greenhouse gases, we know that the changes in the climate are complex and for many parts of the world at least highly adverse for food production. Of course, the dominant uh, form of climate change is warming. Uh, warming of the planet that is already nearly one degree centigrade above the pre-industrial uh, average temperature, but could, on our current trajectory, reach several degrees centigrade warmer than the pre-industrial Earth. Higher temperatures in general are going to be harmful for food production, but especially in the warmer regions of the world, and that means, ironically, especially in the poorest parts of the world.
Crops uh, face many kinds of temperature stresses. At high temperatures, uh, crops uh, may not develop at all. Seeds uh, may become infertile. At higher temperatures, uh, cr uh, plant respiration means a net reduction of yields of farm crops. Higher temperatures mean faster evaporation of water in the soils and more transpiration of water through the stomata of the leaves of plants. Combining those two factors, uh, the ecologists call that evapotranspiration, but it means that moisture and water on the earth uh, returns to the atmosphere as water vapor at a faster rate, threatening the plants with the uh, in inadequate uh, amount of uh, water supply. So climate change uh, threatens the soil moistures and threatens uh, the productivity of crops as a result. Climate change, of course, means more than warming, we know. It means changes in precipitation patterns. Many parts of the world will become drier, and many dry parts of the world will find it extraordinarily difficult, perhaps impossible, to grow a crop. If the general principle that the dry places will tend to get drier and the wet places tend to get wetter is valid as a very rough summary uh, of the effects of human-induced climate change, uh, we can see the trouble ahead because places that are on the margin of crop growing right now may find themselves pushed right over the edge where the growing seasons are too short, the rainfall too small, the precipitation too erratic to be able to support farming in places where there are large numbers of people right now. We know that climate change also means rising sea levels. Uh, it means uh, that places that are farmed right now in lowland areas near the coasts will be threatened. Places like Bangladesh, which are built on the deltas of uh, the uh, the great uh, rivers, the Brahmaputra and the, uh, the Ganges, uh, can be completely inundated. And not only will sea level rise uh, essentially uh, force a major loss of cropland in such areas, but it will also mean many more floods and storm surges of the kind that New York City felt when it was hit by Superstorm Sandy in the fall of uh, of uh, 2012 because the sea level had already increased by nearly a foot compared to uh, the century earlier. So climate change, it's got it all uh, and it's uh, causing uh, tremendous dislocation already but with a lot more to come. We've already talked about the rising acidity of the oceans but have a look at what that acidification means for uh, another part of our food supply for marine life, for the shellfish. What you see here are uh, tests of shellfish growing at different concentrations of carbon dioxide. Uh, and the higher the concentration, the smaller are the shellfish because uh, these animals uh, with the shells or with other kinds of exoskeletons uh, with the, even the microscopic plankton that have calcareous uh, shells can't build their shells when the ocean is more acidic, uh, which changes the chemistry for them to be able to, uh, to, to have uh, the, the normal development of their exoskeletons uh, or their shells. And this is also already uh, causing uh, destruction of uh, many highly productive estuaries, but there is a lot more to come. And so we see that, again, even aside from the climate change, the rising carbon dioxide concentrations are a profound threat for us. In addition to climate change, ocean acidity, many other environmental changes already are degrading farmland and threatening agricultural productivity. Farmers use large amounts of pesticides and herbicides to grow the crops. 
but the poisoning of the soils and the environment is taking its toll on biodiversity. We're seeing a drop of significant biodiversity of many kinds of species, including pollinators, for example, like honeybees and other pollinators that are vital for crop productivity, for growing uh, fruits uh, and uh, other uh, kind of uh, flowering crops. And this has led to alarming and so far, to an important extent, unexplained declines of biodiversity that we're going to discuss later on. But this is another major threat to farm productivity. Invasive species, meaning when species are relocated from one environment to another environment, sometimes intentionally because farmers have the idea that they'll plant crops uh, that have been grown in other parts of the world. But when species are moved to new environments, perhaps not having the predators or the rest of the ecosystem that holds them in check, there can be wild spread of uh, weeds, super weeds in new environments or uh, rodents or uh, other kinds of pests and pathogens that overtake farms. We're seeing a lot of new pathogens uh, emerging in many places, threatening uh, major uh, crops. Uh, and we know throughout human history uh, that potato blight and other pathogens can devastate crops and devastate populations. Farmland depends on water, of course, rain-fed and irrigation. And irrigation is uh, the farm system of choice for farmers when they can afford it because it offers the chance of water control and multi-cropping years. In other words, rather than just one season depending on the rains, in warm climates there can be two or three growing seasons doubling or even tripling the amount of production coming from a hectare of arable land. But the problem is that environmental stress also threatens our irrigated lands because our current irrigation depends on rivers, on glaciers, and on groundwater, all of which are threatened now. Glaciers are retreating. As they melt under the warming climate, the short response is more river flow. This can give the impression of a boom even. Uh, the rivers uh, flow uh, as uh, the glaciers melt uh, in uh, the, the warmer winter and spring days. But when those glaciers disappear, the flow goes from excess to zero, uh, and it can be a devastating and dramatic loss to populations that depend on rivers fed by <coughs> glacier melt. Many rivers have been so uh, overused at this point, dammed and used for irrigation, that they're also not even flowing to the sea. And under the pressures of climate change, the natural forces will mean less river flow in addition. The Nile, for example, uh, which, uh, on which uh, hundreds of millions of people depend, will have a most likely significant decline of river flow as a result of climate change. The Yellow River in uh, North China, uh, another vital uh, waterway uh, for China and for uh, farmers uh, that are in the Yellow River Basin, uh, are experiencing uh, the consequences of declining river flow in a river that no longer reaches the ocean. And groundwater that is pumped for irrigation, <clears throat> as it is in the U.S. Midwest, as it is in the Ganges Plains, face the terrible reality that the pumping to grow more crops for a growing population is taking place far faster than the natural recharge of those aquifers. The groundwater is falling, and when it falls far enough, it no longer can be the basis for agriculture. So the environmental threats ahead of depleted fresh water supplies, whether from the glaciers, the reduced river flow, or uh, the depletion of groundwater is another extraordinarily serious menace that threatens farming in many parts of the world. 
under the pressures of intensive agriculture, often when farms have encroached on forest lands uh, or in topography not really suitable for farms, the result is also rapid land degradation, soil loss, depletion of soil nutrients, and often after new areas are cleared for farmland or pasture land, say in the Amazon, they're abandoned a few years later because they were never suitable. But the consequences are very high. There's been deforestation, loss of habitat, emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. People have depended on a short-term burst of farm productivity. Uh, and then that farm productivity quickly diminishes and then disappears and the farm is abandoned. All of this emphasizes the fact that farm systems, more than any other human activity, uh, are dependent on the climate we know, on the hydrologic patterns we know, on the ocean chemistry we know, all of which are under enormous human change. The Anthropocene is creating a new world, and it will be a dangerous one. Of course, there are possibilities for adaptation. Of course, there are possibilities for more efficient resource use. But the inertia of the way we do things now and the instability that results when we have the collision of nature and our current systems not leading to problem solving, but leading to crises and conflict, need to make us sit up and realize how big the challenge will be. It was hard enough feeding a planet, a challenge we haven't even accomplished with our current population and our current technologies and our current environment. But now when we consider the rising populations and the growing environmental stresses, we realize how big the challenges are that lie ahead.